All right, in this video, we come to Chapter 4, Section 2, Review Problems. First of all, we want to write equations in slope and point-slope form. Recalling point-slope form, y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, where m is the slope and x1 comma y1 is a point that we're given. So first thing we want to do is given a point that's not the y-intercept, Notice when we don't have a point where x is 0 and we're told what y is. So what we need to do in this case is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, plugging in our point. y1 is 1, the slope is 2, x minus 2, and that's all we need to do in this particular case. Write the point write the equation in point-slope form. Next one, we have y minus y1 is 5 is equal to negative 1 times x minus 3. So that's all we're asked to do here is to write the equation in point-slope form. Now, next, where we want to write an equation in slope-intercept form, but we're not given the y-intercept. So in this case, we're going to need to find the slope, plug in a point, and then simplify down from point-slope form to slope-intercept form. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Number 11. We have, first of all, we, give, we can find the slope. I'm OK when you have a graph that you can find the slope using the graph. 1, 2, 3, 4 up 4 over 2, so therefore m is equal to 4 over 2, or 2. So we have that, and we have a point. Let's use the point 3, comma 1. That's going to be my x1 and my y1. So y minus y1, which is 1, is equal to slope, which is 2, times x minus x sub 1, which is 3, now, in this case, we can't stop here. The way we're going to do this is distribute out the 2. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. We're then going to add 1 on both sides. And we get y is equal to 2x minus 5. So that's number 11. Number 12. Again, we're going to start from the leftmost point. We can see we have a negative slope here. A negative slope. And that slope would be down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have a slope of m is equal to negative 5 over 5, or a slope of negative 1. We'll pick a point, any point. We'll use 1, x1, y1, the point to be 1, comma, negative 5. Now we're ready to plug in y minus y1, be careful when this is a negative, equals m, which is negative 1, times x minus 1. All right, first, y minus negative 5 is y plus 5. Then we're going to distribute negative 1 times x, negative x. Negative 1 times negative 1, positive 1. Subtract 5 on both sides. And we get y is equal to negative x minus 4. All right, so that does it for these. What did we do? We found the slope from the graph. We picked any point on the graph. We plug it into point-slope form, simplify it down to slope-intercept form, watching out for any negatives. Remember, the formula calls for y minus y1 and x minus x1, so if you have any coordinates that are negative, it's going to be y minus a negative, which turns out to be positive, or x minus a negative, which will turn out to be positive again. We'll go on. All right, in the next collection of problems, we have a similar scenario. We're given two points, but this time we're not given a graph. So we actually have to find the slope, x1, y1, x2, y2. And we start with our formula for slope which is m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 
minus x1, 12 minus 2 over 2 minus 7, which is going to give us 10 over negative 5, or a slope of negative 2. And we plug in any point. So y minus, we'll use the x1, y1. y minus 2 is equal to negative 2 times x minus 7. We're going to distribute and simplify negative 2x plus 14. y minus 2, adding 2 to both sides, is going to give me y is equal to negative 2x plus 16. And we are done with that one. Number 16, again, I'm going to label x1, y1, x2, y2. Use my slope formula. m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And in this case, y2 is 1 minus negative 2 over x2, which is 12, minus 6. We end up with x1 minus negative 2 is positive 3. 12 minus 6 is 6, or a slope of 1 half. We're going to take our x1, y1, doesn't matter how we do that, y minus negative 2 is equal to 1 half times x minus 6. y minus negative 2 is y plus 2. Distribute 1 half x minus 1 half times negative 6, or half of 6 is 3, but it will be negative. Subtract 2 on both sides, and we end up with y is equal to 1 half x minus 5, and that will do it for that one. Now, in the next problems, we're just using function notation. So we, we're going to translate from function notation down to uh, coordinates. f of 2 equals negative 2 tells me when x is 2, y is negative 2. f of 1 equals 1 means when x is 1, y is 1. All right, and I'll scroll down just a little bit, give us some little more room here. And so we're going to... At this point, label our points x1, y1, x2, y2, and we begin. m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. y2, oops, I didn't label that correctly. y2 is 1 minus y1 is negative 2 over x2 is 1 minus 2. 1 minus negative 2 is 1 plus 2, which is 3. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, so we end up with a slope of negative 3. Plugging in the first point, y minus negative 2 is equal to negative 3 times x minus 2. So we have used the point positive 2 for x negative 2 for y, simplifying. y minus negative 2 is y plus 2. Distributing, negative 3x plus 6, subtracting 2, and we get y is equal to negative 3x plus 4. On to the next one. First thing we're going to do, translate. f of 5 equals 7, means when x is 5, y is 7. f of negative 2 equals 0. When x is negative 2, y is 0. x1, y1, x2, y2, and we begin. m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. y2 is 0 minus y1 is 7 over x2, negative 2 minus 5. We end up with negative 7 over negative 7, which is positive 1. y, plugging in our point, we'll pick the first point, y minus 7 is equal to 1 times x minus 5. y minus 7 is x minus 5. When we distribute the 1, add 7 to both sides, and we end up with y is equal to x plus 2. All right, we'll go on. 
Okay, in the next type of problem, we're given a table of values. And we want to know whether the data in this table can be modeled by a linear equation. The only way we're going to be able to tell that is if the slopes between each pair of points are the same. So let's look at what we have here. We know that the x values here are going up by 2. All right, that's consistent. Then the y value change should also be consistent in that way. So we go from negative 1 to positive 5, which is plus 6. But from 5 to 15 is plus 10. From 15 to 29 is plus 14. We're not getting the same thing. From 29 to 47 is plus 18. There is a pattern, but it's not the same rate of change for y as x changes by the same amount. So not linear. The slopes are not the same for each pair of points. All right, we'll get into more of different types of models besides linear models uh, where there are patterns like we see here, but that will be later. All right, we'll go on to one more. All right, actually, we're going to try to squeeze two word problems onto the rest of this video. You're designing a sticker to advertise your band. The company charges $225 for the first 1,000 stickers and $80 for each additional stickers, each additional 1,000 stickers. So I set up a table. We know that it's $225 for the first 1,000 stickers and then 80 additional dollars for each or $80 for each additional. So when we go to 2,000 stickers, it's going to be 225 plus 80, or 305. And we could keep going if we wanted. 3,000 stickers would be $385, etc. Well, now we have two points. And so we can label x1, y1, x2, y2. We're first going to find a slope m is equal to, actually, I can tell you what the slope is. It's the $80 for each additional 1,000 stickers. Let's see how that goes. 305 minus 225 over 2,000 minus 1,000 is going to give us 80 over 1,000 canceling, and we're going to get 8 over 100, which is 0 0.08. The slope, or the each additional sticker is going to cost eight cents. So we know that now we need to put it into slope, into point slope form. To do that, y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Pick any point. y minus 225 is equal to 0 0.08 times x minus 1000. We'll need our calculator for this. hundred and forty five that means we're paying an initial fee it's equivalent to paying an initial fee of hundred and forty five dollars and then eight cents for each sticker If we wanted to find the cost of nine thousand stickers it would be y is equal to 0 0.08 times nine thousand plus a hundred and forty five and 0 0.08 times nine thousand is 720 plus 145 would be $865. So that's how much it would cost, the equivalent to $145 and then 720 for 8 cents times the number of stickers. All right, we're going to stop this video at this point and then pick up the last two uh, application problems in the